Hello, I'm Diego. Today I'm here in Paris with Olivier de Domazzi, Head of Energy Sourcing and Marketing Intelligence for Data4. Hello, Olivier. It's a pleasure to have you here. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you. Thank you. Look, you are expert in data center, and um, let's start with the big picture, okay? What is your outlook in Europe for data center? Well, the, the data center market is a market that is growing pretty fast. I would say average 20%. This means that uh, while we had 6.5 gigawatts of uh, data centers in 2023, we should have 23 gigawatt of data centers by 2030. That's enormous. The, the, the capacity of the data center market should triple within by the next seven years. So it's enormous. And of course, it's driven by the artificial intelligence. It's good that you said that. What is the key factors that will drive the investment and growth on the data center sector in the next years? Well, I would say that there are three main elements. Uh, the first one is uh, sustainability. Second is pricing predictability. And the, the third one is the access to energy. We should keep in mind that data centers are very power hungry companies, which are consuming a lot. And because of our growth, we need to be excellent. We cannot uh, consume anything else but decarbonize electricity. So sustainability is a key question. The second aspect is also the, uh, the, the price of that electricity. Um, of course, this electricity is being paid by our customers at the end of the day, and they need to, to have some kind of outlook on that price. So we need to make sure that in the next two, four, five, three, five, ten years, they have a view on what it will charge us, what it will be charged to us. And the last thing is the access to power. We know how constraints Europe is on this access to electricity, and it's paramount to build data centers that are quick enough to host all those cloud and AI infrastructure. Uh, the faster that you are, the better you are, because that's what the market is requiring. So the access to power is the paramount question. These are the three challenges that we have mostly um, when choosing, building, operating our, our data centers on the energy aspect, mostly at least. Okay, talk about energy and regulation. What are the main challenges in balancing the growing energy demand, regulatory complexity, and sustainability goals? So there, there was those, and, and in fact, uh, maybe I anticipate uh, the, those challenges. So sustainability, predictability, access to power are those challenges. And, well, they, they are determinant to drive the acceptability um, in the market, because obviously we, could, we would not be well perceived if we were not a fully sustainable company, right? So these are the challenges. Uh, maybe I can anticipate the way we can try solve those issues. Um, one of the way we respond to those uh, three challenges is by buying over the long-term long -term electricity through PPA, Power Purchase Agreements, which is uh, one of the best way to increase the sustainability, make sure we are consuming decarbonized electricity and gain predictability um, in the way we charge electricity back to our customers. Good. And how is important the collaboration between the players, operators, investors, tenants, and energy providers? Well, when you build a campus of data centers, you do not build uh, based on your just own decisions. So obviously, uh, when a site has been identified, this site has been discussed as an interesting place with some of the key prospects. Also, beyond the prospects you discuss with, this site must be meaningful for all the candidates potentially. So uh, in that aspect, there is a discussion with investors which has also to validate that this site could be interesting for a larger audience and make sure that um, you will fulfill it with plenty of customers. Uh, the, the last element is obviously the access to power. The site is meaningless if you do not get from that size the power you require to power those data centers. So 
for any discussion that we have with one site, we have the same discussion with the TSO, and the Transmission System Operators. In France, it's called RTE. And we make sure that they will be able to provide, uh, sooner rather than later, the power that is required to um, power those uh, data centers. Okay. Is there anything that can be done for those connections and points to be connected in an easier way? The, the nicest thing is to select the site according to what is feasible. So the TSO, RTE, has built this kind of uh, motorway of infrastructure, this infrastructure we call the high voltage line. And the closer you are, you are from the voltage lines, the closer you have from those substations, the more likely you are to get uh, that electricity that you, you, you might need. So choosing appropriately the site is probably something uh, that can alleviate some of the risks or uncertainties in the futures. Uh, you said about AI. And of course, when we talk about data center, everybody thinks about AI. But the question is, how does AI helps the data center in terms of design, operation, expansion. When you drive your car, you'd better be in the fifth gears when you drive at 500 kilometers rather than being on the second one. It's more efficient. Mm -hmm. So there is an optimal configuration for your car at a given speed. Data centers is similar to a car, but it's much more complex. There is not just one engine. There are hundreds of engines within the data centers. And depending on not your speeds, but depending on the outside temperature, depending on the humidity, depending on the numbers of servers which are inside your data centers, there is an optimal configuration. Choosing that optimal configuration means choosing for every single motor within the data centers what should be its optimal configuration, which gear in, in which gear it should be. This is something that is so complex that you might require an artificial intelligence to make the choice or to support you uh, and making the choice. So artificial intelligence are considered within data four in the operation, in the daily operation, to optimize the configurations and reduce the amount of electricity that is required to cool down the infrastructure. And this is a very important element of the equation because the electricity that is needed to cool down uh, the, the servers is very important and it's our main challenge reducing that part of the equation. Very interesting. Is there any other technology that are coming up to support the data center sector? The thing that comes with AI is what we call GPU, graphical processing unit. Those units have the specificities to be very consuming. And because of that, the servers will have a very dense availability, the racks, in, that we are about to install, that we should be installing in our data centers, uh, might consume hundreds of kilowatt. And this is so dense that they cannot be cooled down with air. So we, we are considering more and more cooling down the infrastructure with liquid. And this is called direct liquid cooling. Direct liquid cooling is one technology that will be used more and more in the data centers that we are very much considering in test um, and that we will be that we are already actually operating in our data centers and that will be certainly mainstreams in the coming years to increase the efficiency and increase also the density of the infrastructures. Very interesting. And what do you enjoy the most to take part of our meetings and GRI activities? The, the, what, the, what is specific in this GRI club is that we're talking with investors that are looking at the data center wells with their financial eyes and me not being a financial person. So I think that this is quite, quite interesting, quite open-minding. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining us. George, thanks. It's a pleasure.